Well, hey guys, it's the Echo here, and this is the first week of July in uh, 2024. An unhappy day kind of here in California, uh, for one thing, uh, an 11% excise tax on all firearms and ammunition went into effect today, 11%. Not only that, but our gas tax went up too today, so we're not real thrilled. Anyway, I got some fun stuff to do. Um, now that we're done with that um, 45 ACP project, uh, I've got a few other ideas in mind, another series I have in mind. We're not going to start that yet. I've got a couple other projects I'm going to bring you along with. And the first one has to do with this uh, Reading powder measure. Uh, a lot of the folks that I know uh, who are reloaders have rating powder measures. I know High Boy's got one, Fortune Cookie 45 LC's got a couple. I think High Boy's got several also. I never had one. I got a lot of other rating equipment. You know, we got Reading T7 Press, got a lot of rating dies, and I like a lot of their gear. But I never had a rating powder measure. And uh, I have used mostly the RCDS Uniflows. Uh, this is not the very first one I had, but I've had this one for quite a while, and I actually have several that I've acquired here and there, you know, garage sales and whatnot. If I find them cheap enough, I grab them. You never know when you're going to need parts, right? Well, <clears throat> uh, a deal came up on, on eBay not too long ago. For this powder measure, uh, another Uniflow and two RCBS powder measure stands, you know, the big green gooseneck things, um, for really cheap. And I'm talking about cheap. Okay, it was a great price. I couldn't turn it down. I, I needed another Uniflow, like a hole in the head. I think I got five of those, four or something. I need to start gifting some of those out. Um, but anyway, there was this Redding. It didn't come to me exactly like this. For one thing, it had no hopper. It, it had the uh, large... Uh, metering chamber, had a little bit of surface rust on the cylinder, it was dirty as all heck. Um, so I cleaned it up and, and polished up the cylinder a little bit. And uh, I looked at the original meeting, metering chamber, the one that came with it, and it was the rifle size, you know, the great big one. We'll get into that, I'm gonna take this apart, show it to you here in a minute. Um, and I, I, I tried it, maybe there was no way, I tried weighing a couple, you know, small, pistol caliber charges, five grains, seven and a half grains are unique, and you know, et cetera. And it just wouldn't, it wasn't going to work for those kinds of charges. Uh, maybe I'll do nothing with it. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's get down in here a little bit closer and, and take a look at the kind of the guts of this thing first. Here's what I got. Um, when I got this, it did not have a hopper on it. It was very, very dirty. I got it cleaned up pretty well now. Um, there was some very, very light surface rust on the uh, rotor, um, but I went to the polishing wheel and just a couple of zaps on there and got that uh, shined up, and it's in good condition now. It came with the large uh, pistol chambering uh, meter, and I tried that with some five and 10 grain charges, and it's uh, just very unreliable for that. So um, I was able to find over on Midway, they had this. Okay, it says, fits the number three measure. Um, and I have tried this in here, and it, it does fit. It does seem to be the correct part. They only had a couple of them left, so I went ahead and grabbed one. I, um, it was my... You know, Midway gives you that birthday discount, and I had some free shipping going on, so it um, didn't cost me a whole lot to do that. Here's what that metering chamber looks like. Let me screw this thing all the way in so you can see the size of that. Okay, that's about a quarter inch, maybe, in diameter. Okay, and turned all the way out. Let's see, what do I got that I can put down in there? Okay, a little over an inch maybe of depth in there, so. 
and this can be calibrated. I've done a video on calibrating my Uniflow, and eventually I'll do the same thing here. We'll figure out what these graduations are worth in cc's or fractions of a cc and then knowing the vmd for each powder we can come back and figure out what each grad means for a particular powder as far as weight goes they also had a hopper did not come with a hopper on it um, relatively inexpensive um, and this guy is going to work just fine in in here the little set screw bolt thing is a pain in the neck to get that lined up but um it's it you know it can be done we've got a hole here that that has to fit into but as you can see that's a nice snug fit and if you know with the right light you can kind of see down in there and if we line up our um index marks uh correctly as we insert this we can we can get it to to work so uh, hang on i'm going to go ahead and install this so again if we install this so that our index line there is vertical then the hole over here is going to is going to work And I'm just kind of looking in the light here for that, trying to find it. It's close, I think. Let's see if I got it started correctly. No, nope, not quite. There it goes. Okay. And it can only fit the one way. So there we go with that guy, which it seems to work just fine. All right. So we we, we got the small uh, chamber um, meter in there, and, and I like this one. It's really small, and it, it should be able to handle the small pistol charges very nicely. It's uh, got a, you know, the micrometer adjustment on it that I like because I can calibrate that. Um, and I was able to pick that up along with the new hopper um, relatively inexpensively. Um, and I'll say somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, 55 beans or so. And what I paid for the body on this was amounted to about maybe 20. So I probably got 75 in the whole thing now. And I have effectively a brand new powder measure. Um, there was some rust inside. We got it all cleaned up, and it, and it's fine now. Um, I don't know whether this was originally a three. I think that's what that that this was, with just the Reading number three powder measure. Um, uh, to be honest, I you know looking around, I can't tell the difference in the measure's body here. What's the difference between a three, a three BR, uh, the ten X? Um, you know what, what's the differences? And I don't suspect that there's any differences. Maybe they polish them out on the inside. I don't know, but I kind of feel like the differences are in the metering chambers. Anyway, we got this one uh, running really good, and what I'm going to do is run a, a comparison between these two the RCBS Uniflow and this rating, and I'm gonna call it just a rating three because I think that's what this started off being at least. Um, and the impetus for this came from, in fact, uh, Fortune Cookie 45 LC over on his uh, Patreon channel not long ago. He put out a video and he had been looking at the uh, 10X measure and he got one and they're expensive. And I started looking at that one that was, um, before I bought this, uh, and they're really expensive, more than I wanted to pay, we'll put it that way. And he got to thinking about it, and he goes, well, I wonder if I bought a pig and a poke here, is, is this 10X any better than my 3BR, speaking from his point of view. And so he ran a test um, with some powder and uh, ran a whole bunch of charges and compared the two measures to see uh, how precise they were being, you know, how, how did the throw after throw after throw after throw, how did they all compare? So I thought, 
Well, well, in fact, he issued something of a challenge. He said, if any of you guys got, you know, a ready powder measure um, and, you know, something else to compare it to, uh, why don't you do a, a comparison? So I said, okay, I'll do that. Um, and what I'll do is we'll set up a charge and... Hold on. And, and I'll run a comparison with a relatively small pistol charge. I'll use Winchester 231 powder just because that's one that I commonly use that usually meters okay out of uh, this uh, Uniflow. We'll set the RCBS 1010 scale up for five grains. We'll uh, set it up with check weights and do the best I can with getting these two guys dialed in to five grains. Then we'll throw a whole bunch of charges with the camera on the beam and see how they do charge after charge after charge. We'll show, throw 20, 30 charges, something like that. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll run the uh, uh, the uh, reading number three first, and then we'll come back and do the uh, muta flow. I'll have baffles in each of these. We'll fill them pretty well, settle the powder, all that kind of good stuff. And try to throw them as consistently as I can. For those of you guys who use these types, you know that how you throw that charge um, can relate directly to how consistent the charge is that comes out the bottom. So let's go ahead and get set up and uh, run some charges through this guy. All right, I've got the 1010 set up, dialed in at five grains. Got a five grain check weight. And we're zeroed out there. So let's uh, get a few charges weighed out here with some Winchester 231 with the Reading 3, if that's what it is, powder measure. All right, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a powder baffle installed there about halfway down to kind of keep the same head of powder uh, over the um, hole down here in the, in the bottom of the um, metering chamber. So... What I'm going to do then is just go ahead and first settle this powder in there. Okay, knock out as much of the air as I can in this stuff that's in there. And as we do that, sometimes we can actually see the level drop. But um, we want to make this as dense as we can. And the idea of the baffle is to kind of keep the same amount of weight over our uh, metering chamber as possible. So... We're going to just go in here and dump a few charges. Get over here where I can see it. Okay, so a couple taps at the top to fill it correctly. A couple taps at the bottom to make sure we get it all out. A couple taps, a couple taps. All right, then I'll just put this back into the hopper. And... Not having had uh, the opportunity to get in here and adjust this um, vernier yet, I got no idea where we are on that. So let's just go ahead and drop a charge. And see where we are. And that's not actually probably not going to be too far off. Purely by accident. Okay, we're almost exactly at five. We're a little bit shy. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a slight adjustment and turn my meter back out. And let's see. Let's go up about to the first tick mark that's at one and a half whatever those values are on there and I need to tighten that nut on there do a couple more and then we will come in with our pan and try to avoid spilling any see what that did for us We should be darn close. 
All right, I think that's pretty close. So we're going to use that setting. Yeah, I'm seeing a little parallax from the, your camera angle. It's a little better, but it's pretty level there. During the course of the weighing here, you're going to hear me misquote my own self here. Talk about something like that amount being off by uh, a half a grain. No, half of a tenth of a grain, right? I know how to read the scale. I just don't know how to read it and talk at the same time. But uh, yeah, none of the charges that we threw uh, in this test were off by as much as a tenth of a grain. All right, I'm going to throw a charge here. I'm set up right next to our 1010. Okay, so this was the very next charge after that last one you just saw. And let's see where this gets us. Just slightly high, it looks like. Just a very slight... Uh, overcharge there let's do another one we'll do three in a row here and then we'll do a bunch more okay so here's the next charge maybe slightly high what do you think Not far off. Just for grins, I'm going to come over here and adjust my poise and see what that is actually giving me. Yeah, I adjusted the poise a half, and that was too much. So that, I'm going to set it back to my zero setting. So that amount that it was off was less than a half a grain. Okay, let's do one more here. I'm trying to maintain the same amount of force on the handle. Okay, not too bad. That one's right on, looks to me like. Okay, what I'm going to do now is come back over here to the powder measure itself, and I'm going to throw 10 charges, and then we'll come back to the scale on the 11th. I'm going to do that off camera, just so we don't get too long. Okay, I threw 10 charges just into the container here. Here will be the 11th after that series. Again, trying to do it exactly the same way every time. So here comes that charge. Let's see where we are. Again, maybe just the smallest hair over, but that might be a hundredth of a grain, two hundredths of a grain, something like that. It's not much. Okay, let's do that same process again, and I'll show you what I was doing over here on the a powder measure. It didn't take that long. Stand by. Okay, so I, I just came over here and threw 10 charges. Okay, there's one, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now let's weigh the 11th. Okay, over onto the scale. Just a tiny bit under, again, less than half a grain. So that's not too bad. All right, let's dump this one and do three more individual charges just consecutively.
right in there, maybe just the scantest hair low. Number two. A little bit low again, that's pushing up close to a tenth of a grain. Not quite a tenth, I think. I got to discount that when I drop some powder. It spilled out of the powder spilled out of the cup there. Okay, again, about a part of a tenth low. And I'm double checking my poise to make sure that I set that back correctly. You know what, I, when I adjusted that, it was not quite in exactly the right spot over here. It's a little better, but I don't think it's gonna make any difference over here. Yeah, it did read a little bit better. So those previous two might have been the same amount off. I'm going to call these good. Let's do three more, just, just for grins. All right, here we go. One. Yeah, it's wanting to read a little bit low. Pretty darn close. Sometimes I do get a little stickiness in the bearing there. A little bit low, at least compared to the original setting. And a little bit low again by the same amount. Okay, so at least it's being real consistent. All right, and now that the uh, sequence is complete, there it looked uh, as though it uh, performed pretty darn well. Um, I don't think it was perfect, but we don't expect them to be since we're dispensing by volume here, not by weight. So let's go ahead and run the RCBS unit now and see how it does. All right, now I have the RCBS Uniflow. Um, set up over here and I have it dialed in to very close to that five grain mark um, as close as I can get it So let's do a similar test with this one and uh, We'll see how it compares to the Reading 3 Okay, so let's get set up over here and zoom in on our scale okay, As you can see we're Maybe just a shade low, okay, but we'll leave the setting there and use that as our reference mark. So uh, I've run several charges through here already. Let's do one more here for our reference. So kind of the same way that we were doing it with the reading scale. Okay, a couple taps up and a couple taps down. Let's see where this one takes us with... The first charge afterwards a little high again maybe a half a grain okay let's do it again that one's right in there on the on the original reference mark And let's do one more here. Yeah, that one's right in on the original reference mark. So let's come back over to the uh, powder measure and run 10 and then measure the 11th. 
and I'm going to dump these just right in here to my little glass container. So, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we'll get our pan and measure the eleventh right into the pan. I'm going to hold it up here tight so we don't skid any out of there. When you're not dropping into a, a case, sometimes powder wants to ski jump right out of there. Okay, so we've got everything there. Yep. So now over to the scale again. And let's zoom in here for you. Oops. We're off a little bit high, okay? I'm gonna say that that's less than a tenth, somewhere between a half and a tenth of a grain. Let's do 10 more and come back and weigh again on the 11th. You hear that powder? Yeah, here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then let's get our pan and measure number eleven. Make sure we've got it all out of there. And over here to the scale. And we are right about where we were with the last one. I'm going to call that, oh, there we go, call that uh, less than a tenth off, maybe less than a half a tenth. So again, let's do three more in a row and weigh them consecutively. <clears throat> so there's the first. That one's quite a bit high, pretty close to a tenth of a grain, I would say. There's the second one. That one's right in there. Ever so slightly high compared to our first reference. And here's the third one. And that one's right on target. All right, guys, there you go. Uh, for my money, I didn't see a whole lot of difference between these two. This one may have a, have had a slight edge, but it wasn't by much. Each of them had a tendency to be, you know, a half of a tenth of a grain, um, you know, plus or minus. Um, and I don't think you can really beat that. that you're not going to get perfect th throws every time out of a volumetric powder measure like this. It's, it's, it can't happen. Um, there's air spaces. There's variation in grains, uh, you know, the granulation size and all kinds of stuff can... Uh, get in there, not to mention how you throw that charge each and every time that you really do it exactly the same way. So there is that. Um, fortunately for, for my use, you know, shooting inside 15 yards most of the time, uh, half of a tenth is <laughs> not going to be noticeable. Even a tenth of a grain, probably not going to be noticeable at the range. Okay. Bench rest, guys, different story, of course, but that's not what I'm talking about here. All right, uh, you guys uh, be the judge. What, did, what do you think? Um, uh, I, I will say one other thing that I like about this is I like the feel of the way that this guy throws. Okay, it just throws really nice, um, and it's uh, it, it, do, it does have a good feel to it, okay, and the way that it wants to throw every time. So that's... That's, you know, something that, that we like.
I like the fact that, you know, we have vernier, but of course I got vernier there as well. So I, uh, I would say the jury is out. You know, the RCBS 1010 scale had volunteered to be the judge on this one. I think it was a fair test, um, but I'm going to call it a draw. Okay, hope you got something out of that from the Viejo bench for now. That's all she wrote. <laughs>